Hey guys, it's Kaylee. So today I am going to do a Q&A. I asked for questions on my Instagram. I posted a story and you guys had a lot of good questions and honestly a lot of similar questions. So we're gonna be answering those today. There's a lot of juicy stuff in here, including things that I never wanna talk about again, but you guys keep asking, so I'm going to answer. <laughs> Hope you like it. Please give it a thumbs up if you do. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell. I have so many more videos coming, and yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Before we dive in, I wanted to talk about my glasses with you guys. These are from glassesusa.com. They are sponsoring today's video, and they have the best deal by far that I have ever been able to tell you guys about exclusively just for you guys. The link to find out all the information will be down below in the description box. You just have to click it to see exactly how much the offer is going to be. But I can tell you right now, it is stackable, meaning that if they already have a coupon going on or sale going on, you can use that as well as this exclusive offer that I am giving you guys. So definitely make sure to click out that link if you are on the lookout for some new glasses. So these are my favorite because they have this cute little frame up top here and it gives you that little cat eye look. These have blue light lenses, which is going to protect your eyes from your screens. I love that because I'm on my computer all the time doing modules for work. Guys, check these out. So cute. Oh my God. I love wearing these when I go out, but they have thousands of different eyewear and sunglasses starting at just $39 a pair. You can get prescription lenses. They have brands like Ray-Ban, Oakley, Gucci, and so many more different brands for up to 70% off retail prices. In my opinion, I feel like glasses are kind of hard to shop for online. Like if you're not doing it in person, how are you gonna know if it's gonna look good on you, right? Well, they have an AR virtual tool. This is where you can upload a photo of yourself straight on and you can choose whatever style of glasses that you would like to try on and it will put it on your face so you can see exactly how they're going to look. They also have free shipping and returns, 100% back money guarantee. You can shop mobily very easily using that tool. So make sure you guys check out glassesusa.com, get yourself a new pair of glasses and do not forget to check out that exclusive offer. I can't believe it, honestly. It's like a really amazing deal, the best one that I've had for you guys yet. So click on that link, check them out, and thank you guys for sponsoring this video. So let's go ahead and get into the questions. I know you guys are really looking forward to this. Okay, so one of the most asked questions was, when's the wedding? It's definitely going to be in 2024. I'm thinking between February and April and the reason for that is because I truly have no idea, both of us, what exactly we want to do, like where we want to go, um, whether we want it to be like this big extravagant thing or keep it smaller. Like we really haven't thought about it all yet. Um, I will definitely include you guys in the planning, but yeah, I've just been focusing on my new job right now and kind of like living in the moment and enjoying everything that's been happening. I will definitely start to think about it, <laughs> but as of right now, I have nothing set in stone, so. 2024. When can we meet him? I'm so excited for you too. I actually had someone say, it was so funny in one of the questions, they were like, how did you manage to not have him in any of your videos for the past three years? And I was just thinking like, that is so funny because every time I film, he's not here. And it didn't used to be that way. I used to be able to film when people were around and didn't care, but I get like really nervous in front of him. Just like, it's weird filming yourself talking to a camera in a room by yourself. So yeah, um, every time he's at work, that's when I film. But yeah, we'll see. I, I just feel like it's important to keep this part of my life private. And I know that you guys will definitely understand that. Vlogging as a couple, it, not that it ruins the relationship, but it definitely puts strain on it and causes unnecessary arguments, um, mainly because you're always striving to get that content. You're forcing yourself to do things outside of what you would normally do just to get content for the viewers, you know? Um, it starts to become very much like a job, and so you're, you're filming and it, it's just not fun anymore. And you're starting to lose that spark that you had in your relationship because you're like forcing yourself to do, do things you, you wouldn't necessarily do. You know, sometimes you just wanna chill on the couch, but that's not vloggable content. Nobody wants to watch you sit on the couch and watch TV, <laughs> you know? Um, 
I did enjoy the vlogging for the years that I, I, I did it because I genuinely enjoyed, you know, that whole thing. Um, but like as a couple, I no, definitely not because it takes two to tango, you know, if, if the other person is not supportive of what you're doing and doesn't want to be involved, but you're kind of trying to make it happen anyways, it's just not going to work out. Did your ex ever apologize for the way things ended or for things he did during the relationship? No, he never did. And that's because I, I never really gave him a chance to. Um, I didn't need one at that point. You know, I just felt like if you were going to do all those things to me, I felt like apology at that point would be not real because how could you go so many months, almost a year, treating me that way and then say you're sorry about it? I just, it, to me, it wouldn't be truthful. Like it's impossible for you to actually be sorry about that kind of thing. Yeah, I literally, like I told you guys, um, so Christmas, Christmas day, he had spent it not with me um, which you guys know is very much, like, so special to me. I love Christmas, one of my favorite holidays, and you guys saw that in the vlogs too. And to, and to not prioritize me on that day just truly is, is, was the last straw for me. Um, so I spent it alone, and the day after is when I officially broke it off with him. Sorry, I'm starting to like relive it and it's not fun. <laughs> it's, it's not good. Uh, so traumatic. Let me take a deep breath. So I broke up with him the next day, right before he went to work. And then he wasn't crying, no emotion as always. Um, I had asked him if my suspicions and everything that I pretty much knew were happening were true. And yes, they were true. So at least he admitted that to me to my face finally after so many months of me asking if if these suspicions were true or not and him lying straight to my face. So finally, yes, after I broke up with him, he admitted to the things that he was doing. Um, then I was just over it. I was like, okay, well, that's it. Like, we're done. This is never going to be a thing ever again. And uh, I'm going to move out. So he went to work and that whole entire day, I pretty much packed up everything. I had called my dad. I'm like, dad, what do I do? How do I get out of this situation? Um, and when, like within that week when he would come home, I could tell that he was like very uncomfortable with losing me because he was very much a controller type of person. And for him to completely have lost control of me, I could tell he was very uncomfortable with that feeling. And he would try to regain control by trying to pick out a apartment for me to live in that was next to him so that he could, um, you know, fix things in my house or fix my car or just like find ways to still be in my life. Um, he would try to like figure out the plan for me. And I would keep telling him to back off like I am going to figure this out myself with my family. I don't want you to be included in any of this whatsoever. And it would just throw him completely off the edge. So lots of threatening to kick me and Coda out of the house while I was packing and just put us on the side of the road uh, because the house technically was in his name and his name only, even though I had been paying the rent. I was literally paying for both of us to live for years, years and years and years. That's where all my money went, just like that. Um, he also was like really upset because I wasn't gonna be paying that next month's rent for January. And he was telling me that I had to leave him money because there was no other way for him to, to pay rent. Like how could I leave him in this predicament without him able to pay the rent? Do you think I gave him any money? No, absolutely not. He can go sell his cars if he wants to pay the rent. I am leaving. <laughs> I could tell that I was unsafe. Um, he had a lot of weapons in the house, so I didn't feel uh, comfortable staying there any longer. I knew this whole thing had completely thrown him off the edge and I needed to get out as soon as I possibly could for myself. 
and my life, honestly. That's, that's at the point where it was. Um, I could tell that he just was not in his right mindset mentally. Um, just certain things that had happened. I would lock myself in the computer room and I would sleep on that little sofa that we had with Coda. I did that for maybe one or two nights with a knife under my pillow and I'm like, I can't do this anymore, I need to get out. So my dad paid for me to um, mail all my boxes out through UPS since I couldn't, like I didn't have enough time to get a truck there to move everything out. Like I had to do it within the next few hours because he was at work. So I took a few trips in my Jeep with the different boxes I was able to pack up and then it was so funny because I went to, I decided I was gonna drive my Mustang instead of my Jeep. I, that, that was completely paid off and it's a lot more, it's worth a lot more money than the Jeep. So I packed what I could, the rest of the stuff into my Mustang. I had no idea where I was gonna live, what I was gonna do. I was just driving, get the hell out of there to save myself. So I immediately got in the car and the battery wasn't working. Thank God we had went to Walmart like a few weeks prior and bought a battery for my Mustang. So without me knowing how to do anything mechanical, I switched out the battery from the old one to the new one and I got my Mustang working. The tires were like a little bit not the best, but I'm like, I gotta get out. I gotta get out. So I packed everything that I could, Coda in there, and I just started driving. And he actually came home early that day, which he never does and never has done in the whole history of him having a job. He came home early that day because I think he could tell something was going on. And um, I, and the reason I knew that is because he had sent me a text and he's like, oh, I guess you left because I had left the key on the table. Obviously, Coda wasn't there and I locked um, the door behind me like through the inside and then shut the door. So he could tell I left and you know, all my belongings were gone. Most of my belongings actually, a lot. I would say about 50, 50 60% of my things and the rest I couldn't, I just left it there. A lot of that stuff was like down in the basement. I'm like, you know, it's screwed. I don't have time for this. So anyway, um, yeah, he came back to check on me, which was freaky deaky, and I had a feeling something like that was going to happen, so I'm glad that I left when I did. Now, yes, I should have called a cop to monitor things while I was trying to move out. I think that would have been the most smartest decision, but I didn't. Um, that's the only thing I regret. Other than that, so he had said, like, I guess you left, something along the lines of, I can tell that you left and you, and you packed all your belongings. I was gonna help you and like um, I hope you have a happy life and stuff like that and then deleted the number blocked the number that's it blocked him on all social media as well so I have not spoken to him since the day I literally left craziness so that's a little bit more about what happened because I know you guys are like so <laughs> interested to see it's very much not what any of you I know for a fact were expecting because we had this whole persona in the vlogs and you think people are one way because they are that way in the vlogs but let me tell you right now there was so many things that I edited out that you guys never saw about what he was really like so you would have never had an idea of what he could have been like because I wouldn't ever show it to you. I tried to show you the most perfect person because that's what I wanted you to think, that I was with this perfect person. Um, so yeah, it's like you would never know what he was really like unless I told you. You know, behind closed doors, people are very, behind closed doors, people are very, very different than, than they seem. I think that's as far as I'm gonna go into details today. Maybe over time I will get more into it, but I think that's as far as we're gonna go today, which I feel like was actually pretty far. I don't want this whole video to be about that. How did you move on from a 12 year relationship? Was it hard to get into your new one? And actually it really wasn't difficult for me because I'm, I was so used to being with someone and having a significant other. I, the, what I'm not used to is being alone. Um, honestly, Koda, what was harder was the alone time. 
for me? You know, like, what do I do with myself? And, and that is the moment where I started figuring everything out, like what I really wanted to do with my life, how I wanted to continue my education, get into nursing. That's when I really like figured things out. And then the relationship came about with Ryan. You know, I had been introduced to him from my best friend who lives down here that is her fiance's best friend. So that was the connection there. And um, I was completely ready at that, at that moment to explore. I wasn't ready for like a full blown relationship, which I didn't even think was gonna happen. I, but I was ready to speak to someone and to like talk to someone new. I was kind of excited, you know, like I had talked to the same person for so many years. Like what are, is another guy out there like? Are they all the same? You know, um, I was very interested to see what he would be like. And lo and behold, he's like complete opposite of what I was used to. I remember just thinking like the first days I was with him how much of a gentleman he was with so much respect in just the way he spoke to me. Um, and, and at first I remember thinking like, oh, I hope this isn't just a phase, like this is how he's gonna be just because it's the first few weeks of us dating, they're always gonna be really nice to you and treat you like a princess. I was thinking that and I, and I was hoping it wouldn't be the case and, and I was definitely wrong, it wasn't the case. He continues to this day to still treat me the same way that he did in the beginning. Yeah, like in my opinion, he is the true definition of a man. Like he has the biggest heart, biggest heart. And I can tell that he truly looks out for me all the time and makes sure that I'm always okay. He's always texting me even when he's at work just to make sure I'm good or when I'm at work to make sure I'm good. Like he's very much in tune with me and my feelings and making sure that I am happy, that I'm, that I'm healthy, I'm good. You know, like we're, we're on the same level at all times, which is really a unique experience because that's not at all <laughs> what I had before. Um, it's just nice to know when someone truly cares about you and, and f to, to have a man that actually has emotions and is able to express them and communicate with you in like a respectful way, it's just, it's great. Everything that Ryan does is always with me in mind. That's, that's how I feel, like his this decisions that he makes, it's including me. It's not just him thinking about himself and what's gonna benefit him. I'm, I'm always included in the decisions. Another question was, did your ex ever try to get you back? No, because like I said, I never gave him the chance to because I had blocked him on all social media and everything, the number, it's all blocked. And, and that's because when you do, I'm a Taurus, okay? I am stubborn. When you hurt me that badly, I completely cut you out of my life. No remorse. It's like I become emotionless about it. When you hurt me that badly, I no longer have feelings for you. I no longer ever think about you. You are just erased. And the memories too, erased. I only time I ever think about it and go back is because you guys asking me questions and I know you're just very interested and you want to make sense of all of it. I totally get it. So don't feel bad about that. But yes, like it, it's very easy for me to just cut and never think twice about it. Um, now, on the other hand, I am very tough. I can take a lot, a lot of abuse. I will fight for something as long as I can, but you know, when it gets to that point and you've done that many things wrong to me, I will go over the edge. Like there will be a last straw for me. Unfortunately, I let it go for way too long, <laughs> but I am happy that I made the decisions that I ultimately made. Um, I just wish that I had done that. I had done it sooner, but then at the same time, everything has happened so amazingly afterwards. Like I could never even write this in a book. What has happened to me in the last three years? So, timing-wise, I guess it was perfect, perfect timing. But yeah, I, I am upset with myself that I did take that for as long as I did because I definitely didn't deserve that. Now, keep in mind, it wasn't like that since the beginning. Obviously, I wouldn't have been with him for that many years if it was like that from the beginning. But 
I did see little red flags hinted at me in the beginning. I chose to ignore them because they weren't that extreme. But over the years, they started getting more, more, more extreme and more daily. Um, but I just, you know, I was like, I've been with this person for so long. I don't want to even try to be with anybody else. I love my house, I love my pets, I love his family. There were things that were like outweighing the, the red flags at that moment. Uh, but then, like I said, that last year, that was it. That was it, you did me way too dirty and that I just couldn't, I couldn't stick around any longer and I didn't deserve to stick around any longer. Um, so yes, I'm very resilient, but at the same time, you need to know that when you don't deserve something, you're gonna you're gonna know it. You're gonna feel it in your gut that this is not right, and you need to do something about it as soon as you possibly can. Do you plan on having any kids? Yes, absolutely. So Ryan wants four, and I would love four because I grew up, there was four of us. I have three other siblings, and then we had the two additional sisters. Um, so it was so awesome with six of us. I love a big family, especially on vacations. The only issue is that I'm 30 freaking two. Okay, so that would mean that I need to just pretty much be pregnant from now until I'm 40. <laughs> like it's just non-stop pregnant, like every year. So I don't know how I'd be able to handle that, but I'm gonna try my best because I am so happy he is the exact person that I want to have kids with. I am so ready, 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 ready to have kids. I cannot wait to be a mom. It has been a lifelong dream of mine. I've always, always, always wanted it. So without crying, um, it's definitely coming soon. What are you and your fiance's zodiac signs? So I'm a Taurus and he's a Sagittarius. And I, I don't know if those are necessarily go together, but <laughs> I love how he's such a leader. Like when he wants to do something, he gets it done. No questions asked, no excuses. Like he's very a very determined person. He's also very protective. What else? Very loyal. Oh my gosh, like a golden retriever type of loyal. <laughs> so it's, I think, a great zodiac sign. He's also very adventurous. He Sometimes he'll just randomly be like, do you want to do this? Do you want to go here? Do you want to go there? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I, I also am adventurous at times. Like though I'm very lazy. I do like to just chill and sit around the house and do absolutely nothing. But then there's days where I'm like, let's go. Let's go out on wave runners. Let's, you know, go to the club. Like there are times where I switch it up and I become like a different version of myself that's like really fun and out there and outgoing. Uh, so I like to kind of switch it up and whenever he gets in those adventurous moods, we have so much fun. So yeah, I love being with the Sagittarius. I love the fire, I really do. Because I'm, you know, grounded and he really gets me out of my shell, out of my box and, and helps me to have more fun. What are some fun things you and Ryan like to do? I'd say the thing that we do the most is eat, and, and that's because I think I'm a Taurus. He truly loves eating too. Like we, one of our most favorite things to do is try new places and try new foods, go to a different city and try a new restaurant. There's this nightclub around us in the big hard rock guitar. It's called Dare. I love going in there because they have the flashing lights and like the um, techno music and the dancing and you can have a drink. They have the fog that comes out. Oh my God, I feel like I'm being transported into another dimension. It's the coolest thing ever. I always am like totally vibing out, you know, have a few drinks and I'm just like not afraid to dance. I'm, I'm like seriously in a whole nother world and it's such a cool feeling because I'd never did that before when I feel like I should have in my 20s but I never did so I feel like I'm kind of reliving my 20s when I when I go to the nightclub <laughs> another question is will you be taking his last name yes I will definitely be taking his last name when we get married honeymoon destination I don't know that's a good question maybe a cruise because I haven't been on one in a while and we both love cruises and we both went on a lot of them in our teens and 20s. What is our height differences? So I'm like 5'2", five, 5'3". Five, he is six foot. Will we be getting more Coda content? Miss her adorable face and personality. Yes, absolutely. Coda! Come here. Oh, go up here. 
Up here. Up here. Okay, give me a ball. Give me a ball. Good. She doesn't really come up here because she's afraid of all the big lights, the big studio lights. But I did like literally buy the seat just for her so that she could sit here while I'm filming or doing my hair and makeup. But she never sits in it. But it's good. She's good. She's just getting old. She's nine years old now. Luckily, she's very healthy. Doesn't have any problems besides her like that thing on the side of her, like the um, what is that called? Fatty tissue that has built up into like this ball on her side. And I went to get it looked at. They said you know we could drain it out and remove it, but it would be four thousand dollars. I am afraid to be putting her under sedation, especially with her like so old now. I would hate to lose her that way, so they said it's non-cancerous and, um, you know, it's not like a big deal. It's not hurting her. She can still walk. She's not in any pain. Like, she's extremely healthy. She runs around like a crazy puppy around the house, like, multiple times a day. Like, she's absolutely insane. She's just being calm right now. Um, but yeah, very fit still. You would think she was a puppy if you went and played with her at the park, <laughs> the way that we throw the balls around. But yeah, that's the only thing she has is that like big bump still but you know they were like it's not life-threatening just leave it there's no point there's no point in getting it removed and having her go through sedation and everything like that so i've just been leaving it and it hasn't grown any bigger i feel like it's still the same size so yeah but other than that she's she's a good girl yeah after being hurt how did you learn to trust again oh my god she's staying i was just i had an open heart i was i was just very much interested to see what another man could be like and how he could treat me. I think I was just so used to being pushed down in terms of like disrespected and like, I felt as if I was being dimmed, like my light was being dimmed until it was just darkness. And so if he had been a crappy person, I'm used to it, so be it, you know? I would have been like, well, it's exactly the same as it's always been. Move on to the next one. But the fact that he had proved me wrong is how I was able to kind of like open up over time. We both were each other's first person that we dated after breakups. <laughs> so we got along in that sense because we were kind of in the same boat, you know? Like I said, he kept proving me wrong day after day and I just, I just kept my heart open, you know? Whatever happened, happened. I was okay to get hurt again. And I think that's what made it work is because I just let all the guards down and I'm like, let's just do this. Do you ever plan on moving out of Florida? I think if I ever lived anywhere else, it would be Texas. I would love to get a big house for like an amazing price <laughs> because over here, I don't think I'm gonna be getting a house anytime soon. Like the prices are so outrageous. Even my rent keeps going up by a couple hundred every year and it's just like getting extreme. We might have to stay here another year, but I am on the lookout. We, we're always looking around. I just, I want land and I feel like that's kind of hard to get in Florida unless you go to Homestead, but that's just so far away from everything. We, we enjoy like being close to the city life so we can kind of enjoy that but then come back home, you know, and have some land somewhere where Coda could run around and I don't have to go to a park to throw her balls around in the middle of the night because she doesn't like other dogs, you know? I would love to be able to just any time of the day, go in the backyard, jump in a pool, play with Coda. It would just be so cool. That's one thing I do miss about my house in Maryland was the backyard was just amazing. Will you be doing your own makeup for your wedding? I was. You know what, I think what I'm gonna do is try it out with someone and see if I like the way that they do my makeup. Like a trial run, you know? And maybe with more than one person. And if I like it, then yeah, great. I will trust them to do my makeup that day. But I am very particular with my makeup and I, and I really have never had my makeup done by anyone before, so. I might end up doing it myself. I'm just worried that I'm gonna be taking on too many tasks at once. Now, as for my hair, hell no. Definitely going to be having someone do my hair and it's probably gonna be like a, a half up, half down look, kind of like this with the bangs in the front. Um, I've always liked that on me the most. That's like my favorite hairstyle on me. 
I hate my hair up and I don't want it to be all the way down because then I feel like it's too too much, like it's not as elegant. Does Ryan mostly have the same friend group since you met through your best friend? Or do you and Ryan have the same friend group since you met through your best friend? No, we actually don't. So all of my friends are from nursing school and then all of his friends are from work or like high school. He stays in touch with his friends from high school. That's something I never did. And they all still live around each other, you know? So he has a huge friend group. I've been introduced to everybody. I love his friends. They are great people. Like that's how you know you're with a good guy when his friends are good hearted people. And you can tell, you know, that they're like they're the kind of people you want to associate with yeah it's nice we have like our own friend groups and we have our own lives that are separate from each other and i think that's an important thing like once your lives start getting too intertwined that's when things get really messy and i, I think it's important to be an independent version of yourself so that you have things to yourself that you are in control of and no one else can can tell you what to do you know it's like your own personal private thing that you do and then you come together on common grounds with other things you know but but I, I think it's just so important that you each have your own stuff to yourself as well all right guys that is it for this video i hope i was able to answer some of your questions thank you so much for watching if you liked it please leave a thumbs up down below don't forget to subscribe hit that notification bell and i will talk to you guys in my next video bye